Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a recent discovery from early 2018 of yet another interesting object in space that might potentially serve as a new human home in the future, around a star known as K2155. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Mat. <laughs> Now to start this video, I actually wanted to go into the simulation that I don't use very often, but you totally should check it out because it is absolutely free. It's called NASA's Eyes uh, Visualization. Specifically, this is the one called Eyes on Exoplanets. They even have this as a kind of a browser plugin where you can explore various planets and stars and just look at them in um, pretty much uh, the same perspective that I have here. This is a simulation made by NASA and it's usually relatively often updated. And here you can even go and check, uh, check out some of the latest discoveries. There's been quite a lot of new um, exoplanets that have been discovered and as you can see a lot of them have the uh, name K2 in them, just like the one I'm talking about today. K2 stands for Kepler, Kepler 2. This is the second um, Kepler mission that continued the first Kepler mission after it had some initial problems, actually quite serious problems as a matter of fact, but Kepler is still kind of okay. Uh, this is what Kepler discoveries are and this is where they're located and you can see that this, this huge cone, this is the initial Kepler discoveries and then the rest are the more or less recent ones, this is all, all of these are K2 and um, except for these ones. And we're basically looking at one of these stars called 155. Now to find this star you just have to go into the search box and then look up a name and type 155 and you have it right here. So first of all the star. We're gonna zoom into it really really slowly but basically this is the star about 203 light years away from us and um, it is a type of a red dwarf. Now, what is really interesting about this particular star is that it's a slightly larger red dwarf than usual. It, it is actually about 54% of the mass of the sun, which is um, a much, much larger type of a, what would be called a red dwarf. And this also suggests that this is not a very active red dwarf. It doesn't, it doesn't flare up as much. And so the paper that did uh, basically describe this particular star and the planets around it, the paper known as A Bright Metal Poor M Dwarf with Three Transiting Super Earths by, um, I believe it's uh, Teruki Hirano, Fei Dai, and John Livingston, and a few other people that... There's actually a huge list of people, so you can check out the paper uh, by yourself if you're interested in it. But basically, they mentioned that in the 80 days of observation, that when they were looking at the star, it hasn't had a single flare. And for a red dwarf, that's actually really impressive. If you remember from one of the previous videos when I talked about Proxima Centauri uh, and obviously the closest exoplanet to us known as Proxima b, that star flared up quite a lot and as a matter of fact uh, one of the recent flares was so powerful that we now are almost certain Proxima b might not really have much on it in terms of like water and atmosphere. But this star is not very active and so for this reason we think that maybe just maybe these planets that it has around it are not just rocky as you can see here, it's actually a pretty, pretty awesome simulation of these planets, um, but they also might possess atmosphere and maybe even water. So we're going to take a look at B and C in this simulation, and then we're going to try to create D in Universe Sandbox, because I want to see if we can make it basically um, habitable. Uh, so the first two planets are as you can see, more or less rocky and Earth-like. This one might actually be what's known as a mini-Neptune, and the first one is probably a very hot planet similar to Mercury. And the distance to the star here is about 10% um, of one astronomical unit. So they're about three times as close to their star as Mercury is. But the star is not as powerful as our sun, so it's not that bad. But the third uh, planet, known as K2155d, which I'm having trouble clicking on. Okay, there we go. Um, basically, kind of, sort of, at least in this simulation, it looks like this. As a matter of fact, it seems to have either liquid water or something really purple on the surface. 
In other words, um, the scientists at NASA have hope for this planet. Um, and this is a terrestrial planet. It is a uh, relatively hot planet. Um, it's at a distance of about 0.2 astronomical units. A single orbit takes about 41 days. Um, and if you look at it, it's just sort of inside the habitable, uh, the, the warmer area of the habitable zone. Now, we're going to basically treat this in Universe Sandbox and try to simulate the conditions that we have here as well, just to see what it's going to look like. So, we're basically are going to start by placing it here. So here's K2-155D. And uh, this is what it currently looks like. The mass is 1.67 masses of Earth. It has approximately... Um, well, I guess its orbit is about 41 days, and it, uh, its temperature currently is approximately 47 degrees Celsius. So it's already a little bit too hot. Now, it is too hot for two reasons. One is that it's actually sort of inside the warmer area of the habitable zone. So it's where... Uh, it's just outside of where Venus is. Venus would be here, and so this planet is on the edge of the um, habitable zone. In other words, there's a very, very large chance for what's known as the um, carbon dioxide runaway effect. So the carbon dioxide might not be very stable here, and thus populate the atmosphere with very, very high greenhouse uh, effect. But let's say that there is no uh, runaway greenhouse effect. Let's say that there's just atmosphere, uh, consisting of some carbon dioxide, but really a lot of like, I don't know, nitrogen and maybe some oxygen in there from some kind of a unusual reaction. So let's see what would happen then. We're going to add some atmospheric pressure here. Let's, let's say uh, just enough for a human being to live an okay life. 0.7 atmospheres. And let's also um, add some water. We're gonna uh, add water in the materials here. And then see what this planet looks like following a few more modifications. So. Here we have a relatively terrestrial looking planet with uh, atmosphere, with liquid water and potentially um, some uh, kind of a greenhouse effect. Well, maybe even quite a lot because of the water, but uh, the temperature currently is going to be probably very hot. Oh yeah, it's super hot. It's close to the boiling temperature of water. So it is like, okay, yeah, it's at boiling temperature over 100 degrees Celsius. So does this mean that this planet is a no-no? Is that basically a failed sort of opportunity for us to find life outside and also possibly find a new home? Not really. And here's why. This planet is also just so happens to be tidally locked, which I'm gonna do to, uh, right now. I'm gonna press the tidally lock button. And there's only one implication from this. The implication is that the dark side never really gets any heat. And the twilight area right here gets just enough heat to basically maintain a very, very Earth-like conditions. So even though this part here might be all desert and burned and scorched and super, super hot with 100 degrees Celsius of atmosphere, as long as there is uh, enough atmospheric pressure and circulation of the air, the hot winds will actually become warm winds and become cool winds. And so there's going to be this gradient of heat around this planet, basically moving sort of in a circle and mixing the air, meaning that the, even the dark side is going to be relatively warm. And this side here is going to be almost perfect for uh, survival of basically, you know, Earth life. Now, obviously this is a huge speculation based on the fact that we assume that this has atmosphere and liquid water and um, similar atmospheric composition to Earth, but there's still a very, very high chance that this might actually be uh, a planet that we might one day consider to be either a new home or at least a potential candidate. Well, anyway, so that's all I really wanted to talk about in this video, and uh, hopefully one day we'll learn more about this particular planet and also maybe discover even more these unusual but really, really cool objects out there in our galaxy, relatively close to us. And the planet is called K2-155D. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and space out. And as always, bye-bye.